Puccini in this opera, he, he pretty much made it like a movie. It plays like a movie and, and pretty much at the same pace of a movie. It's the work of a master, which Puccini was. It's the 19th century Paris. It's a group of artists, of Bohemians, and that's why it's called La Boheme. It's cold, and when I say cold, it is bitterly cold, to the point that we have as many clothes as we can put on our bodies on and still accomplish our meager work. There's a small apartment in which these four young uh, guys live. A uh, philosopher, it's me, a uh, poet, uh, um, uh, a painter, and a musician. They're having fun, teasing each other, taking the mickey out of each other, creating what is mediocre art at best. It's very meager living. We feed our soul rather than our bellies. When Shonar walks in with money, there is the first hint of the incredible love between the group, as if they were family, and they are. They are each other's family. And then Mimi walks in and changes Rodolfo's life. And in fact, I think she changes everybody's life. <laughs> She's been living in the house and uh, she knows all of them by the names. And uh, of course she knew who Rodolfo was because she was probably listening every time they was passing through the staircase. And um, she knew why she came, not only because of the light. She came to uh, try to, to change something in her very lonely life. Uh, with the hope there will be something. As he's doing that, Anna, you see, you, you see him closing the door. It's lovely, because he's closing the door. It makes it more intimate and more special. She is pretty much the perfect girl. She is noble of heart and of soul. She's beautiful. She is not coquettish at all, but she is very pure and honest about what she wants. And I think she, at this uh, moment, she wants uh, love. Yeah, and it's very pure, uh, very innocent, but love. Bring anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Mimi's beauty is understated. It's, it's a classic, you know, beauty you find in portraits. Musetta is about sultriness. <laughs> She's the type of girl that when she walks in a restaurant or a bar, every man, you know, um, um, and sometimes woman, just look at her, wow, who is this? Bombshell. Musette does a courtesan, so this is this is what she does for a living. She goes to parties and she entertains and she's on the arm of, you know, one man here or there, doesn't, you know, depends on the night. And she's also very much in love with Marcello. She really maintains her love for Marcello throughout, through their fights, through through everything. <laughs> Musetta, it's totally opposite of Mimi. It's nice to, uh, to see the difference between two girls and uh, also between uh, two guys. And I think uh, it's, it's good what they are like they are. The, the one couple and another one, completely different. Marcello and Musetta are a mess. They are together one minute, they're apart. The next minute, they're together, they're apart. They love each other, they're mad at each other. But somehow it breeds fire in them, this, this sort of relationship. 
But Mimi and Rodolfo, it's more of an ideal love. You know, it's, it's one that two people meet and there's, you know, their eyes meet and they're star-crossed lovers and, and there's this love at first sight and it's kind of this poetic love. But when there are problems with Mimi and Rodolfo, they don't deal with it as well, which, you know, creates a lot of conflict within the opera. It's one of the most perfect operas because all of the musical moments meet the dramatic moments at the same time. Puccini is so good that um, he, once you're in it, he doesn't let you get off. And um, in the last act, uh, I, I invariably cry. I think it's impossible to finish the bohème without emotion. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's one of the most beautiful productions of La Bohème in the world. And I have to say, even if I wasn't a performer, I mean, it, it, it is hard to say goodbye. It's a piece of, you know, Royal Opera House history. <laughs>